I'm Carl, and welcome to a bonus episode of Old Oscar Countdown. Yesterday, we just had a massive day, and really this past week has been a massive week for Oscar Guild nominations. These are nominations from different guilds uh, uh, that ultimately many members make up the Academy. They have their own sort of separate nominations, and they're very indicative of not only what gets nominated for the Oscars, but also what wins. So in today's episode, I'm going to be breaking down the recent PGA nominations, the DGA nominations, and the WGA WGA nominations with a couple of sort of talks about the Ace Eddie Awards and the ASC nominations later on in the show. And this is a special episode, so we're not going to be going down any categories. I'm going to be looking at the best documentary category. Uh, of course, the regular program scheduling on Monday, but this is a bonus episode. So please show your support. Let you know your comments down below, what your thoughts on my analysis are, what's your own analysis. I'd love to hear that. That's ultimately why I create this channel. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it. I'm going to start off with the PGA nominations. Now, if you're unaware, this is the Producers Guild Awards, and their lineup is very indicative of not only what's going to win Best Picture, but also what's going to get nominated. And I just want to read off the sort of past 10 years. And now there's sort of a little bit of a, a dichotomy because every year the Producers Guild nominates 10 movies. However, for the past 10 years, the Oscars have only been nominating eight or nine movies. That process is changing this year with the Oscars. The Oscars will nominate a definitive 10 movies for Best Picture, so the Producers Guild may be more relevant than ever. But I'm going to read off the sort of overlap. If there's only eight movies that nominate the Oscars, did the Producers, the Producers Guild nominate all eight and, and whatnot? So I just want to show you how accurate they are. So in 2020, they went seven for eight overlap with the Oscars. 19, 2019, they went nine for nine. 2018, eight for eight. 2017, seven for nine. 2016, 9 for 9. 2015, 7 for 8. 2014, 7 for 8. 2013, 8 for 9. 2012, 8 for 9. And 2011, 7 for 9. So that's the past 10 years. They've never gone below 6 for 9 or 6 for 8. They're always either missing one movie or missing a couple. Um, but and then a couple of years, you know, 2018, 2019, they're perfect. Um, they're pretty much, you know, getting it exactly right on the dot. Like last year, they got it pretty much right on the dot except for the father. So based on this lineup, I think the top eight are pretty clear based on their nominations here, but also sort of guild support and, and, and general support of what we see in Critics' Choice and, and other guilds and what have you. And that top eight being uh, Belfast, The Power of the Dog, King Richard, Dune, Licorice Pizza, West Side Story, uh, Don't Look Up, and then Coda, probably in the eighth slot. Um, those are a pretty confident eight, and, I, and I'm pretty sure those eight to get in. Um, and then in the ninth slot, I think I'm more confident now in Tick, Tick, Boom. I've always been skeptical of its response, but with someone like Lynn manuel Miranda getting in for a Best First Time Director nomination at DGA, with the film getting an editing uh, nomination at Ace Eddie, of course, getting in here, getting a Critics' Choice, I was always worried about it because I wasn't sure if it was going to get you know any other nominations aside from Andrew Garfield, but there's a very real possibility in which it gets Andrew Garfield, it gets editing which now I'm a little bit more convinced it's going to get, and then also gets in for, here for Best Picture. We don't always see a lot of movies get nominated for Best Picture and then don't get any other nominations. However, based on its support here at PGA, based on its support that it's Netflix, it's still going to be supporting the movie, and it is supporting the movie. It does seem to be like a movie that is more solidifying that ninth spot, so I feel good pretty nice right now that Tick Tick Boom is in that ninth slot. And then in my personal opinion, the tenth slot um, will go to a sort of older movie. Now, here, being the Ricardo sort of got into that 10th slot. It's been doing very well with the guild, and I don't want to sort of overlook it because there's a very real possibility that it gets in. You know, got two nominations at SAG. Uh, it seems to be resonating with the, the voters. However, I think right now my 10th pick is still going to probably stick with The Tragedy of Macbeth, just because when we're looking at the PGA overlap, like I said, they very rarely go 10 for 10 or 9 for 9. Most of the time they usually miss at least one, maybe two movies, but usually one. Um, and the one we can sort of point out, some years it's easy, some years it's not. But in certain years, they're usually a little bit more populist. They like to the pop their movies, so they'll nominate a Deadpool. They'll nominate a Borat in years past. So we kind of know in, in most years, those are the movies that ultimately won't get nominated for Best Picture because it's a little bit more of a producer's guilt thing. In my opinion, if we're sort of deciding between being the Ricardos and the Tragedy of Macbeth, I do think the Tragedy of Macbeth, I've always felt, is, is an Academy movie. Um, 
it's done well enough in terms of the guilds, ASC nomination, you know, uh, got the Denzel Washington nomination for SAG. Um, I still think it could get, could get in for a thing like production design, or I think personally still adapted screenplay despite the WGA and, and recent sort of stumbles there. I still think Joel Cohen could get recognized there. And when we're looking at movies that don't get nominated at PGA and then do get nominated at the Oscars, they're usually a little bit more older. So think of Phantom Thread, think of Amour, uh, think of The Father. These are the types of movies that don't get nominated at PGA, but do at the Academy. I think the tragedy of Macbeth, but also Being the Ricardos kind of fits into that mold, despite the fact that Being the Ricardos, I do think is a little bit more populist and general and more traditional compared to a movie like Tragedy of Macbeth, which is very much an art house kind of a movie. However, I think the Academy wants to seem a little more sophisticated. I think the older members will appreciate the Shakespeare of it all and of course the you know incredible talent whether it be Joel Cohen or Denzel Washington or Francis McDormand who combined have a total of 10 Oscar wins so they're very well liked and I think that will be a movie that sort of slips in come Oscar night and it's sort of the older uh, member vote that wasn't represented at PGA that does get represented at the Oscars. So the top eight is pretty solidified. Tick, tick, boom, biopic with a you know, Lin Manuel Miranda, respected director, with a, a direct, uh, an actor that's going to get nominated. Feel confident in that sort of ninth spot. And then I'm actually going to kick out being the Ricardos right now, and probably put Tragedy of Beth in there. But we can't overlook being the Ricardos, and it could be a very well easy nomination come uh, the Oscars. And I, I wouldn't you know begrudge you if you if you put that in your nominations. And then if there's another movie contending in that fifth the tenth slot, it could be a movie like Nightmare Alley. However, I don't think that gets in because this it really needed to get in for a PGA. You know, PGA would like uh, Nightmare Alley more than I think even the Oscars potentially just because it's, it's a genre movie most recently Martin Scorsese you know penned an open lit letter in the LA Times telling people to watch this movie so there's some support there you know it's been doing well in terms of the guilds getting cinematography nominations things like that so there is still you know technical support which we always thought it would get um, but right now I still think it's on the outside to get in for for picture mostly because you know this is a, a big budget movie from you know Fox and Disney and uh, the fact that it didn't uh, get you know any recognition here at PGA, which is a guild that normally appreciates those kinds of movies, genre, big budgeted movies. I think that it, it sort of was the final death nail to Nightmare Alley's chances. And then there was you know discussion uh, about movies like No Time to Die or Spider Man No Way Home, sort of most notoriously. But the fact that it didn't, neither of them got in here for PGA when they've been rewarding you know movies like Deadpool in the past. So if Spider Man can't get in at PGA, I very highly doubt it will get in at the Oscars. Never say never, but for those reasons, I think um, No Time to Die and Spider Man No Way Home pretty much have no chance at getting in for Best Picture. And then a movie like House of Gucci or The Lost Daughter, those two, two movies not getting in here also I think hurt their chances. Lost Daughter less so, House of Gucci more, just because I thought maybe with the SAG Ensemble nomination, you know, it, it would be appreciated and maybe sort of push it over the edge, but because it didn't get it at Brewster's Guild here, um, that's the kind of sort of big budgeted uh, ensemble piece that they've rewarded in the past. So the fact that it didn't get rewarded here, I think is indicative of its sort of now dead Oscar chances. Now transitioning into the Directors Guild Awards. The top five were pretty standard. However, every year when the top five come out, I always go, okay, what's that and who am I replacing? Now the top five this year um, were Kenneth Branagh, Jane Campion, uh, Steven Spielberg, Paul Thomas Harrison, and Denis Villeneuve. And that's the sort of top five right now in terms of Gold Derby, in terms of predictions. I think a lot of people have that top five. But every year, the DGA very rarely goes five for five with the Oscars. As many, many times, the DGA goes four for five or three for five. As a matter of fact, they have an average over the past 10 years of getting 3.7 out of five of the nominations. However, that's not even truly indicative because there was like four years in a row where they went four for five, then they go three for five, then there's three more years of going four for five. So <laughs> almost every year you can count on the DGA either missing on, on a couple or most of the time only one. So now I encourage you, you can go with the five for five of DGA. They haven't done that in 10 plus years, you know, and I don't think that's going to happen again just because of the trend, but it, it could happen again. There's, there's no real sort of opportunity for it not to happen. But I encourage you to look at the five and, and pick one of those people that you don't think are going to get nominated to get in. Um, people I've seen argue for Kenneth Branagh for, for Belfast because he does fit that sort of uh, Aaron Sorkin, Tragedy Macbeth, kind of um, Martin McDonough, Three Billboards, not super um, stylistic, sort of simple 
a heartwarming story kind of or interesting story element and the acting performances that are well appreciated and sometimes those guys slip peter fairly green book that's a definite possibility um i'm not going with him some people think paul thomas harrison for licorice pizza because licorice pizza is probably the weakest out of the, those five movies i'm not going with that either as a matter of fact in, of those five, I'm replacing Steven Spielberg with Rasuki Hamaguchi from Drive My Car. Now you may say, Steven Spielberg, West Side Story, come on, he's one of the greatest directors of all time. And that's actually why I think he won't get nominated. I went through and I went through all of the DGA nominations and the Oscar nominations to figure out you know, how many were four for fives and three for fives in that average 3.7, like I mentioned. And what I found continuously were the people that were nominated at the DGAs and the people who were nominated at the Oscars, who weren't nominated at the Oscars, there was a bit of a trend. And that was the sort of older American director. So I would consider Clint Eastwood didn't get, you know, didn't get nominated when he got nominated for American Sniper, didn't get in at the Oscars. Ridley Scott got nominated for The Martian, didn't get nominated at the Oscars. I would even put in someone like a Bradley Cooper in there. And what happens instead? These old, respected sort of American directors, actor turned directors in the case of Bradley Cooper, they don't get nominated at the Oscars, but the international directors, Thomas Winterberg, um, Pavel Pavlikowski, Mecca Haneke, they get nominated at the Oscars and they don't get nominated at the you know, DGAs or they don't get the support or people don't predict it. So what that, and really what's been, it's been telling us that year after year now, the director's branch is very international. There's a lot of international support there. And I don't think they will necessarily feel the need to nominate a guy like Steven Spielberg in the same way they didn't feel the need to nominate Ridley Scott or Clint Eastwood. Spielberg is in this sort of Tom Hanks zone. He's a legendary director. Everyone knows it. He's won twice. He's been nominated a bunch of times. That doesn't mean we need to nominate him every time. Look at The Post. He didn't get nominated. The movie got nominated for Best Picture. Look at Bridge of Spies. He didn't get nominated. The movie got nominated for Best Picture. Look at War Horse. He didn't get nominated. The picture, the, the picture got nominated. He didn't get nominated for best director. So there's not, a, there's kind of a precedent for Steven Spielberg sort of getting overlooked in this scenario. Plus, there's some maybe concern that Steven Spielberg, he's doing a remake. Is he really adding anything? Is there anything sort of original and creative that he's doing? Now, let me tell you, West Side Story is one of my favorite movies of the year, and I think he did a terrific job with it. That being said, I'm not exactly sure. If the international, very international branch of the Academy's director's branch will necessarily appreciate what he's doing because they've already nominated him so many times and he's a legend and they may sort of overlook that. So I think, don't be surprised if we see a Steven Spielberg snub come Oscars night in Best Director. Those are my thoughts on, on, on DGA. You know, you can talk about Maggie Gyllenhaal or Michael Sarnowski for Pig or the Mama Miranda for Tick, Tick, Boom in terms of their, you know, Oscar chances because they got in for a first time director. Um, I don't think any of them get into the main director's branch. However, you know, it does show some support for a movie like Tick, Tick, Boom or, or Lost Daughter getting more of those other nominations that makes me more confident. Then let's talk briefly about the WGAs. Now the WGAs, I, I don't always sort of highlight extensively just because they're a weird guild because a lot of times significant movies aren't even contending. Um, but I do think it's sort of an up in the air category that I sort of want to talk about a bit. So original screenplay, they nominated sort of a clear four, which I think are going to get in, that being Licorice Pizza, King Richard, don't Look Up, and being the Ricardos, they nominated those four. I think those four movies get in. And the obvious movie that wasn't eligible to get nominated here was Belfast from Kenneth Branagh. I think that will take the place of The French Dispatch, which the WGA nominated. So I think the top five for screenplay has been solid for a while and will stay solid. Maybe we'll see a surprise Parallel Mothers, but that top five sort of feels uh, positive and strong enough to me to, to get those in. It's most notably the best adapted screenplay category that I think has a little bit more divisiveness in terms of its opinions. Um, I think in this case, The Power of the Dog and The Lost Daughter were not ineligible, were, were ineligible, they were not eligible, so they didn't get nominated here. Um, I think both of them do get nominated, um, so that sort of will knock out a couple of movies. In this case, I think it will knock out the nominations here of Tick, Tick, Boom, and Nightmare Alley, just because those don't seem like sort of writery movies. And like I mentioned, the PGA section, I think those movies are sort of cusp best picture movies. And so Power of the Dog should knock out one of them. And then The Lost Daughter, Maggie Gyllenhaal, it is very sort of writery kind of a movie in the sense of its concept. It's based on a Elena Ferrante movie. Um, so, and oftentimes they reward first time writer directors like Maggie Gyllenhaal, but will reward them with a screenplay nomination. So Lost Daughter to me just seems like an automatic adapted screenplay lock. So I think so you knock out Nightmare Alley, you knock out Tick Tick Boom, um, you keep Coda, you keep uh, uh, Power of the Dog, you get Lost Daughter. And then in that sort of final slot, 
I think a lot of people are assuming Dune is going to get in because it also got nominated here. Personally, I, I'm not 100% sure Dune may get in, but right now I'm putting in actually The Tragedy of Macbeth. That seems like a movie that, you know, we see a surprise adapted screenplay nomination for The Battle of the Buster Scruggs. This is Joel Cohen, seven-time Oscar screenplay nominee. He's very well respected. Now, the concern being is that this is Shakespeare. Now, uh, WGAs have never nominated a Shakespeare adaptation, so there wasn't any surprise that wasn't nominated here. But if I'm betting on it to win or again, a Best Picture nomination, excuse me, The Tragedy of Macbeth, I think it could surprise here. And I think is still banking on that. This is a movie that will surprise come Oscar night, like a Phantom Thread, um, like a Ballad of Buster Scruggs. I think it could get in for production design and for screenplay and, and, and for picture ultimately. So I'm sort of betting on that movie. And I think that because of the respect of Joel Cohen, even the respect of Shakespeare, it may be an odd one to bet on, but I'm not sure exactly Dune Scream screenplay in the same way Mad Max didn't get screenplay, in the same way Titanic didn't get screenplay. So uh, I sort of betting on that more than anything. And I think um, the WJ adapted screenplay is gonna be less predictive than the WJ original screenplay this year. But once, once again, the WGA, because so many movies are ineligible, they're almost ineligible. Then quickly, briefly talking about the Ace Eddies and the American Society of Cinematographers Awards. So the Ace Eddies is the editing guild and they nominate drama and comedy awards. So the fact that West Side Story did not show up in best editing, I think really hurts that movie. I'm not necessarily confident that it's not going to get it in for editing. You know, Michael Kahn is an editor, or co-editor of the film, and he's a legendary editor and well-respected. But the fact that it didn't get in here, I am concerning. It's concerning because, you know, it didn't get in here. It, um, it didn't get in, West Side Story didn't get in at the American Society of Cinematographers, which makes me confident that a guy like Steven Spielberg won't get nominated because, frankly, West Side Story just hasn't been performing as well as we thought it would. So no editing here for West Side Story hurts. Um, tick, tick, boom, getting in here, I think, even though it was in um, comedy, is still a, a strong enough sign for me personally that it will get in for the main uh, editing award because it does seem like along with Don't Look Up to be the sort of most rapidly edited and because we're doing with multiple timelines and it's a quick paced movie and then the editing is a little bit more noticeable so I think because it gets in for best picture I do think Tick Tick Boom gets in for editing so that was the other sort of big note for me however a movie like Don't Look Up is still in the contention for sure because that also got nominated here but the big sort of note from Ace Eddie Awards is No West Side Story was a big blow to its Oscar chances because like I said if you don't get an editing nomination you will not win best picture. And then the American Society of Cinematographers. Another surprise here because Yanush Kaminsky is a well-respected cinematographer and he didn't get in here. Um, now I still think, you know, probably in editing I may knock out West Side Story because it really didn't have the support it needed at Ace Eddie. However, I still think Yanush Kaminsky could get in for cinematography. I'm not necessarily jumping off that boat just yet because I think that um, he's a well-respected cinematographer who's gotten nominated before despite not being nominated at the American Society of Cinematographers. So it's not like a, a necessarily overlap. However, the American Society of Cinematographers are very predictive. There's an average of 4.3 out of five in the past 10 years. So if you're going with the five, five, from, the five nominations from ASC, go right at it. There's a very high likelihood that you're gonna get nominated. But right now, I'm probably gonna sub substitute a guy like Dan Lauston from Nightmare Alley for a new Kaminsky for West Side Story, just because I think the West Side Story is the best, best picture movie and does have some interesting, unique visuals and, and and Yunus Kaminsky is this legendary cinematographer who's been nominated many times before, and this is a guild that likes to reward people a lot of times. Think of Emmanuel Lubezki winning three years in a row. So I wouldn't necessarily doubt that Yunus won't get in here. Mostly West Side Story, I think, hurts more so not getting in at editing. So I wouldn't begrudge you if you go five for five with the American Society of Cinematographers. Like I said, 4.3 out of five. But look at last year, for example, you know, they went with Cherry. Um, the year before that, 2019, they went with Ford v. Ferrari. Those movies didn't get nominated at the Oscars. So you can a little play around, similarly to the GGA, if you want, in that fifth slot. And I think I'm going to play around that fifth slot and still go with a guy like West Side Story, Yanush Kaminsky, instead of Nightmare Alley's Dan Lauston. But that's about it guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you comment below, let me know your thoughts on the PGA, DGA, WGA, all that stuff. How's it gonna affect the Oscar race? What do you think of my sort of maybe shocking Steven Spielberg knock? Am I crazy about the tragedy of Macbeth? I'd love to hear that in the comments down below. But that's about it guys, until next time, stay tuned.